So I've had loads of people ask me to do this video about left hand comping. You know, when you're soloing with your right hand, it's what you do with the left hand sometimes that can make the right hand sound a hell of a lot more interesting. When we start playing, we're super chuffed when we get to the point where we can fly around a little bit on the right hand and at best the left hand might just hold the chord. But as we progress as players, we start to realise that the left hand can bring a hell of a lot to the party and it can make you sound a lot more sophisticated and funky. So I'm just going to try and show you my approach to it. It's quite hard to articulate in some ways because it's very instinctive, but I can give you some pointers. So I suppose, you know, when you're starting out, you're just playing with your right hand. And, you know, hitting uh, chords with your left hand. So I think a good way to start uh, trying to move your left hand is just accompanying yourself in a simple way. You can use the sustain pedal, which makes it a hell of a lot easier. You know, it's, it's, the piano is so much more forgiving when you use the sustain pedal, as long as you don't forget to lift it up every time you change chords, because otherwise it's gonna sound horrible. But uh, you can try just these sort of simple things. Just hitting the root, like a C minor nine. So there, you could practice that. So that's C minor nine, F minor nine, and that inversion. D with a sort of a sharp nine and a raised fourth. And then a G altered. That's getting your left hand moving. Um, and then once you start getting that, and you can manage that, then you try to play some solos over the top. You can also practice just playing the chords, but throwing in some altered things in between, altering the chords as you go. It's about studying altered chords, you know, so you have a C minor nine, I'm playing it in this inversion, but if I had the bass there, it'd be like that. And then I can alter that, maybe raise the fifth, put a flat ninth in it, make it a major from a minor. So and that just gives you that little difference. So down to an F minor. And then when I'm going to go down to the D, I'll just pass down to it. So I'll go E flat minor nine which would be so that's a big part of these passing chords that you know just throwing in altered things you know that's like a F minor 9 but I'm making the minor 7 a major seven, but it's still a minor chord. Gives it a lovely complexity. That subtle harmonic change will make the uh, right hand melody feel a lot more poignant.
you use the sustain pedal there, it's a lot harder when you don't use the sustain pedal. So, you know, start trying to do that. See then I'm using uh, a combination of using the pedal note. Try that to start with. It's not easy. You know, I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy. You know, there's people online, I see the adverts, you know, you can do this in an hour, you can do this in two hours. Yeah, you can, but being good at keyboards or any instrument means a hell of a lot of hours put in, slaving away, getting very, not very far, you know, and now and again you get a breakthrough and then you get over that hump and it's a great feeling and then you've got another hump, you know, and that's just how it is. You've got to put in the time. But, you know, try this. Doesn't matter what the chord sequence is, that's a like D minor 9, G minor 9, E minor 7 with a flat 5, A altered, right? And then when you've really got that down, just start trying to play some simple stuff over the top. I'm not saying you're going to be able to do that straight away. You know, it is a question of, you, you'll start and you think, I'm never ever going to be able to do this. But you will, you will, if you keep trying. You know, just do the left hand, get that down first, get a little movement going on. And try and make it groove, do you know what I mean? And then when you really got that down, just simple stuff. That's gonna give you a lot of pleasure straight away once you can start doing that and backing yourself, you feel really good. Let's try some funk comping now. So there's a bit of everything really. Um, I'm doing the call and response. And I'm sort of altering the chords at the same time. So it's like a basically a that kind of thing. E minor blues, but I'm just giving that little going from a third and a sixth to a fourth and a seventh. And then I'm bouncing between the left hand and the right hand. That's a really important thing. And it just gives you that rhythm. Like there. That's what the right hand's doing. And this is just going. And it's going in between the two. And I will even do that with the chords. I'll put them in on an off beat, on a 16th beat. You can almost throw in anything, you know? After a while you get the sense of what's going to work well, but throwing in some chords like that on the 16ths as well really motors it along. So then you can be playing very simple little pecking phrases, you know, two or three note phrases. And the chords in between stabbing just really makes it sound a lot cooler and more sophisticated than it really is. So even though I'm still just over at E minor. You know, you can have lots of fun playing with this stuff. It's the interplay between left and right. The master of this technique is Herbie Hancock. If you check out his albums in the 70s, The Headhunters, Frost, all the, that kind of era, he really, for me, kind of invented that style and I just love trying to play like that, you know. But a lot of what I really love about his playing is that simple. Mm -hmm. 
play the blues, throw in some in-between chords and syncopate between these little phrases. Another cool thing to try is mirroring the right hand, reinforcing it with uh, left hand chords. So if I was doing, this, say this, A11, C11, You know, you, you start to really reinforce the rhythm. You get the idea? You know, you really start to reinforce and it's a cool thing to do when you're building a solo, you know, and you've done a bit of that rhythmic stuff and then you just want to really expand it out. Start doing that. Start reinforcing what you're playing with the right hand with the left hand and you'll find it really lifts things, you know, and then you can break out of it. It's like tension and release, you know, you, you get all the pecking. get the idea you know it really drives it home and it's exciting when you're playing with a band and you'll find if you've got a really good drummer like I luckily have in my band he'll start responding and the whole thing will just lift up towards the gods you know it's very exciting right super old school Chicago blues shuffle right left hand one two three four 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 right hand one two three four one two three four one two three four put them together see how two hands together interweave create a groove. One hand makes the other one feel like it's swinging. It's corny old stuff, but it's great to practice that actually, because that left hand is really grooving and driving it along. And you have to learn to be independent, but it's almost like forgetting about it and just playing. That's the level you gotta to get to. It's, uh, you get to this point where you start to feel it instinctively, do you know what I mean? You don't have to think about it. That's when, you know, you, you've got it down, basically. 